This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the eHealth Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. Today we're speaking with Dr. John Mesa, Harvard-trained, triple fellowship-trained plastic surgeon who is known for his extraordinary surgical techniques and stunning results. His specialty is cosmetic plastic surgery for the face, neck, breast, and body and specializes in buccal fat removal. Most of the procedures are done using local anesthesia. And Dr. Mesa, thanks for joining us here today on the Health Radio. Thank you so much for your invitation. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. Likewise, certainly our honor and pleasure to have you with us as well. So tell us about your background for starters and your training, your office and locations. Let's start there today. Okay, so I am, uh, I am, um, I did my medical degree in South America, in Colombia. I am from, I am Latin, and then I came here to the United States to do my surgical training. I did uh, general surgery at Harvard, then I did plastic surgery at Penn State. I then also did fellow, research fellowship at Harvard, and then I did two sub specializations: one in, in reconstruction of the face and, and neck, is like an official surgery fellowship in Michigan, University of Michigan, and then I did an aesthetic fellowship on the face in University of Alabama. Right now, I'm based in between New York and New Jersey. I have an office in Manhattan and also an office in New Jersey. And I have a satellite office in Miami on which I go once a month. Fantastic. And you certainly have the bases covered per the locations. Excellent and so convenient. Now, you specialize in, as we said, buccal fat removal. What is that? How is it done? And for whom and why is this procedure very popular for? This procedure is very popular because finally people realize why celebrities and actors and actresses or people in Hollywood look very chiseled. Uh, when you see people in the movies or in the shows, everybody has like a V-shape, nobody has a chubby face, uh, has high cheekbones, and people wanted that. That's why the popular filters, the face filters came up to give you that chisel look. So there is a, a, a procedure called the buccal fat removal that what it does is removes an spe- specific pocket of fat located in the lower part of the cheeks that is the one that gives you the chubbiness. And once that pocket of fat is removed, then you look like a supermodel, like a celebrity, and that's why it became very popular, especially because we are in the era of social media. That surgery existed for many many years, and it was, I was I I consider it was like a uh, like one of the best kept secrets in Hollywood. But now with social media, people are starting to learn more about that, and now people is uh, is going very hard, and right now is trying to get uh, the surgery done to look like the people in the um, entertainment industry. Now you got to admit, social media certainly has helped the plastic surgery industry. For sure. Now, uh, beyond Bucal, you also specialize in minimally invasive neck up procedures. What procedures are most popular there and how is it that you can perform them with local anesthesia versus general? And how is that an important factor as well? Okay, so the second most common procedure that I do is chin liposuction with or without skin tightening. Uh, when somebody needs skin tightening, I do a sec- a, an additional procedure called neck tight that shrinks the skin. And it became very popular, especially because of the COVID pan- uh, pandemic. Now everybody works at home in, in doing video calls and always the camera looks at the neck and everybody is starting to see their double chins that they used to be there but nobody was aware of them so because of that it became very popular and now it's like not my number two procedure and those are that procedure and the skin tightening is performed through very little teeny tiny incisions one underneath the chin and uh, two one each, uh, behind each ear lobe so that's why they are minimally invasive why local anesthesia because I am passionate of doing procedures with the people awake without pain. In the past, a lot of most of the surgeries were done under general anesthesia because they are painful procedures. But now, with the development of local anesthesia techniques, the uh, procedures can be done completely awake, pain-free, and it gives the um, the the it, first of all, 
It decreases all the potential risk of general anesthesia or IV sedation. And secondly, it helps the patients to undergo the procedures when they want to uh, maintain their privacy. When if something is done on the local anesthesia, the patient can either commute, drive, fly in and out the same day of the procedure without any restrictions. Certainly appreciate the details. Most helpful today, we are speaking with Dr. John Mesa, Harvard-trained, triple fellowship-trained plastic surgeon with a specialty in cosmetic plastic surgery for the face, neck, breast, and body, and specializes in buccal fat removal. He's joined us here today on eHealth Radio's Plastic Surgery Information Channel, a part of the eHealth Radio Network. Now, how has COVID-19 impacted the world of plastic surgery, in your opinion? And are you seeing more or less procedures now and throughout the pandemic? Get into some of that information. In my opinion, it has exponentially increased the number of plastic surgery procedures. And the reason is the, uh, the the reason is because now everybody wants is work on. I would say most of the people now work from home. Before COVID, the number one limiting factor for somebody to take uh, to undergo a surgical procedure was the downtime and the time that they needed to take off from work. Now with the COVID pandemic, and now everybody working from home and doing everything over the internet, either Zoom calls or Google Meet or anything. Now people can still work, turn off the camera, and recover after the surgery. So before, for example, uh, if somebody wanted a neck, uh, a chin liposuction, and he or she didn't want anybody at work to realize that something was done, he or she needed to take 10 days off. Right now, patients take only one day, the day of the procedure off, then the next day they are in, in front of their computer, they are talking, they are doing everything with the camera off, so that's why they, now everybody's doing the procedures that they never did in the past. It certainly does make a lot of sense. In fact, we've spoken to quite a few surgeons over the last, say, three to four months, and they're saying the same thing. So thanks for your input there. Now, Dr. Mesa, what would you say is the most important thing to know when choosing a plastic surgeon? Yeah, so the most important thing is that if, uh, the patient needs to know if the, per- if, the, if the practitioner is indeed a plastic surgeon. There is a lot of people that used to call them cosmetic surgeons, and it's like uh, 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 people think that when somebody's a cosmetic surgeon, it's a plastic surgeon. So uh, it's very important to do a little bit of research, look at the background, and see if they graduated with a plastic surgery or a facial plastic surgery uh, degree. Another thing is to uh, ideally is to have uh, uh, to look for somebody that is board certified. What is the mini the minimum board certification that the plastic surgeon that is graduated and passed his board has the minimum requirements to do the be- one of the best jobs with the uh, decreasing the the potential risk of complications of the surgery. And thirdly, very important is to uh, find somebody that specializes in the kind of procedure because. The, on my experience, the more you do a procedure, the more uh, skilled you become, and then you can give a better result, minimizing the potential complications or risk of the procedure. So that's why uh, now plastic surgeons, we are becoming kind of sub-specialized in certain areas of the cosmetic plastic surgery. For example, at the beginning, I was doing everything head, neck, breast, body, and right now I'm focusing specifically in face and neck, because the more I do, the better the results, the better the outcome for the patient. Dr. Mesa, really appreciate what you do and for joining us here today. Before you go in conclusion, is there any closing thoughts, a final word or a takeaway or a tip? Anything else you'd like to share as we conclude? My number one tip to tell the patients is do not choose the surgeon because of the price. Always look for the plastic surgeon that you feel more confident and do you think that is going to give you the best result, no matter if he or she is a little bit more expensive than the competition. Certainly some sound advice as we conclude today. Dr. Mesa, really appreciate your time and joining us here today and for the information shared as well. Where can listeners connect with you and get more information on your practice and locations? Where's the best place online to get all the details? 
Uh, all the specific details are in my website, and it's very easy. It's my name, drmesa.com, either drmesa or doctor spelled out, drmesa.com. And also go into my uh, – I'm very active in Instagram and in YouTube. My YouTube channel is uh, Dr. Mesa, and in my Instagram is dr.mesa. Uh, and, in that, and, and there is another one that is dr.mesa with the number two at the end. And uh, over there, they can find all my information, all my videos, everything that I do every day in cosmetic plastic surgery. Again, listeners, it is DrMesa.com for further details. Dr. Mesa, all the best. Thanks so much for joining us here today on E-Health Radio. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And you as well. We've been speaking with Dr. John Mesa, Harvard-trained, triple fellowship-trained plastic surgeon with a specialty in cosmetic plastic surgery for the face, neck, breast, and body, and specializing in buccal fat removal. And for all the details, visit DrMesa.com. And again, this has been your host, Eric Michaels, and we do thank you for your continued support of the eHealth Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealthRadioNetwork. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit eHealthRadioNetwork.com. 